Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 31st of January. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment and share is definitely appreciated. Uh, a few kind of interesting updates this week. Uh, first new videos, I did a 90 minute, so a, a super long video, all about really right sizing your Azure resources, how I can use things like Autoscale. So it goes into a lot of depth, all about thinking about the shape of your resource, the, the work size, how I can scale, what my seasonality is. Um, but hopefully that's, that's kind of a useful thing. And then a, a cool new feature, actually signing into Azure AD with nothing but your phone number, don't even need to know your username, and then a text message for a code I type in. So not for any kind of secure workload, but maybe for field workers that just need basic access. Uh, this could be kind of a, a game changer for them. So in terms of new features, when Azure started, it really had kind of the Azure cloud services as the Azure service manager. We had the web role and the worker role, and that's still in that Azure service manager, kind of that V1. Well, some people are still using that. And what they've actually announced now is that's now shifted to kind of this classic service. And now there's this new ARM-based cloud service deployment and you're going to kind of get this extended support option. So it's those same two services, um, the worker role and the web role, but now you'd get things like ARM-based template deployment, uh, things like role-based access control, tagging, uh, key vault integration. So it's really just going to give you a, a new lease of life on those things. Now, ideally, you'd still be trying to move to something like uh, an app service plan or functions or Kubernetes, but if you are invested in those kind of initial web, those worker roles, there is now this kind of extended support version. Uh, you can actually see them. So if we quickly jump over to the portal, so if from within here, we actually go and search for kind of cloud services, we can see those two options. We can see the classic, oops, we can see the classic and that extended support option. So again, that extended support is really just that ARM-based version. It's nothing, I'm gonna change the application, it's the same packaging format, it's just now based on that Azure Resource Manager. Uh, then Python 3.9 functions are in preview. So if I'm deploying an Azure function and I pick kind of that Python stack, now there is a 3.9 option. On the storage side, we have these new resource instance rules for Azure storage. So this is all about how can I control access to my storage account. Now, if I think ordinarily, if I have the idea that, hey, look, I have this storage account, how can I control what it can be accessed by? So there's things like the firewall. I can say, well, there's these groups of kind of public IP ranges that I can allow or deny. If I have a virtual network, well, we have things like service endpoints. I can expose a particular subnet as a known entity to be allowed to connect to that. I could project a private endpoint into that virtual network and then restrict access by the private endpoint. But what about if I have other Azure services like uh, Logic Apps or Azure Container Registry or other things that don't inhabit my virtual network, but I want to be able to restrict the storage account so that only particular instances of that type of service is actually allowed to successfully actually use a particular instance of a storage account. So what we actually now have, if I jump over and we look at the storage account, so again, this, this is in preview, but if I just go and pick a storage account, I'll just really pick anything. Now the resource I'm gonna give permission does need to have kind of a system assigned managed identity. But if I look at my storage account, if I go to my networking, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it from all networks to in this case, I'm gonna say selected networks. From here, if we actually go and scroll down, we have the idea that we'll allow trusted Microsoft services, 
but you'll also see these resource instances. So what I can now do is I could say, well, a particular type of resource. So for example, maybe I pick SQL servers. And I can now pick an instance of SQL Server that I want to have access. Or it could be all of them in the current resource group or sub or tenant. But I can now restrict it to certain types of service. You can see like container registries. Well, I could restrict it in this case to my particular container registry. So I'm essentially now just controlling access to that particular instance of the storage account from a particular instance of that PaaS service. So uh, actually a, a pretty cool capability. Now building on that idea, as I just drew the private endpoints, it's now possible to actually copy between storage accounts using private endpoints. There could be a private endpoint on maybe the target or the source or the target and the source. So now utilities like Copy Blob, like AZ Copy, providing the client has access to both of those, the storage and the destination, I can now actually do those copies leveraging private endpoints. So it enables me to keep that lockdown environment, but now use those various copy capabilities between storage accounts. Um, HD Insight, um, really two encryption capabilities. So IPsec based encryption between the HD Insight cluster nodes. And then also I can now have a, a bring my own key for the encryption at rest of the data and temp disks um, of the HD Insight. So it's still using Azure Key Vault, obviously, where all of these customer managed key things live. But it's going to apply a second level of encryption to that data disk to those temporary disks, in addition to the default kind of layer one platform encryption that's also used on the OS disk. So just really additional encryption capabilities. Miscellaneous, uh, VM tasks, in case you didn't see this, it is actually kind of cool. So for a long time, we've had the ability with virtual machines to actually have an auto shutdown. So if I just pick a particular virtual machine, do I have one handy? Nope. So I'll pick a virtual machine. We've always had under operations this kind of auto shutdown. So at a certain time, shut it down. Well, they're now lighting up under automation are these tasks. And if I go to tasks, I have these templates. So I'll click add. And I can do the same kind of power off a virtual machine, but I can also now start the virtual machine. And you can kind of think these are going to build on over time. Now, what these are doing behind the scenes is it's a logic app. So I'll pay whatever I normally pay for a logic app. But now it makes it super easy to start and stop a VM at scheduled time. So I don't have to go and create the logic app myself. It's just going to go and build that for me. So if I do have workloads where I'm kind of trying to optimize, it only needs to run at certain hours, well, those VM tasks are actually super powerful there. Uh, South Central US and Germany West Central now have availability zones. So remember, availability zones are those distinct physical facilities with separate communications, fiber, um, with utilities, um, with power, so the cooling separate, and I see those three AZs that are logical for each subscription. So those are now just generally available for South Central US and Germany West Central, which means not only are kind of VM deployments, but things like storage accounts now, we'll see ZRS and all those other types of services that can leverage availability zones. Um, the Azure AD Premium, I already covered this a few weeks ago, but they kind of officially announced this. So the Azure AD Premium, which are the only ones that have an SLA, that four nines up from the three nines, uh, goes live April Fool's Day. A uh, little bit of an unfortunate um, date, I still feel, to pick going live on April Fool's Day. But the 1st of April are now a four nines SLA. And nothing to do with Azure, but I just thought it was pretty cool. So hopefully many of you have discovered Windows Terminal. Uh, it's, a, it's a great interface. I can hook into things like the Azure Cloud Shell natively. I can bring up different types of um, terminal interface. But the settings has always been via a JSON file. 
So in version 1.6 in preview, we actually now have a UI based version. So if I actually quickly jump over, so from the Windows Store, you can just go and search for kind of Windows Terminal Preview. And now very simply, you, you have to go and enable it. So it's not enabled by default. You actually go and have to add that option. But if I went to my settings, I'll just open that up super quickly over here. You can actually just go and add this additional entry here that's in the documentation. It's basically binding control shift comma to open the settings UI. So if I actually now do control shift comma, now we have this nice little Windows terminal graphical settings option. Things like the interaction, the appearance, color schemes. I can do all of this from a, a, a pretty nice um, little user interface. So I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. I think it's a, a pretty nice addition. Uh, and that's really it for this week. So I hope it was useful. Um, some nice new things, go and try it out. And as always, until next week, you take care.